I told myself that I didn't need to do any more readathons for a while. Two straight back to back in March was a lot. And well, maybe I should take a break and focus on the books that I really should be reading and reviewing. And then I found Pokemon. And here we are with another readathon DVR. I actually really enjoyed the concept of this one. It's very open. It allows for you to read a lot of the books you were going to read anyway. Um, it also incentivizes reading bigger books. Uh, let me explain. The Bookymom Badgeathon is running from May 3rd to May 17th. That is two weeks, a Friday to a Friday, and it is comprised of three teams, Instinct, Valor, and Mystic. So essentially, you join one of these teams and you are essentially fighting to help your team. There is a team book for every uh, team there chosen by the leader and every one page you read and you will be logging them counts for one Stardust. You don't need to know very much about Pokemon. You can be one of those people that literally only picked up Pokemon Go for the two weeks it was popular. You'll know enough to participate. There are 15 badges that they keep hinting will be useful in a future round. So apparently this thing is going to go into other rounds. There's going to be battling, and I'm really excited for that. Uh, so you do not have to get everyone. You want to get as many as you can because they will be helpful. Uh, so I decided to do uh, a TBR for all of it, and then I can read the ones I really need to prioritize. And then if I have time, can read the rest of the books or some more of the books based on my mood and know that it's all going to my team. Obviously, I am instinct. I have the shirt and everything. Been instinct for forever. Uh, so our team book is... Let me get my notes here. Boundary Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is a fantasy book based on an assassin that steals something that ends up being a super powerful, powerful magical artifact. Sounds like a great start for a story. Uh, but that is the one, the only book that I will be getting outside of the books I already own or the books that I borrowed from my husband, because like I said, I really got to get some of my own books read. Next up is the creative badge, which is to read a book based on art or music. For this one, I picked Clara and Mr. Tiffany by Susan Vreeland. Mr. Tiffany was the man that created a lot of those fancy lamps that you've often seen maybe in your grandparents' house or maybe on like one of those old-timey office movie sets. Um, they had the very gorgeous... Uh, glass top and it is considered a form of art this is actually about the woman behind the man clara who designed a lot of those things that made them so famous but was never given the credit for them and on top of that uh mr tiffany tiffany does not hire married women so clara is struggling with the concept of does she stay with the art that she loves or does she give it all up to have a family and a husband um so this seems awesome i love these kind of stories i love the Actually, there was a woman there the whole time because history so much buries the, the work of women to make it look like there were none doing anything when in reality there was a ton. They just weren't given the credit. The next badge is the memory badge. Read a biography or a memoir. And this one I've had for forever. As You Wish by Carrie Elways. And this is exactly what it looks like. It is a biography slash memoir of the making of The Princess Bride by one of the main cast. And I'm really excited for this one. I want to know if there's any cool like little stories. I picked this up uh, in the clearance section from Target of Forever Ago. And I just keep not picking it up. And I need to. This looks awesome. Uh, so I will definitely maybe be putting that in slightly higher priority. Like part of my brain is like, these all should be priority. But I can't read 15 books, 16 books, counting Boundary Side in two weeks. I'm just not that good. Up next is the exemplary badge, which is to read a classic. Now, I have many classics downloaded on my e-readers because there's a lot of different websites where you can get them for free because they're beyond copyright. Uh, so for this one, I have picked out Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. I am a Jane Austen fan, and I've wanted to read her entire collection for a while, and Mansfield Park is one of the few ones I haven't. Uh, basically, a young, poor girl is sent to live with her rich aunt and uncle and cousins, and they're all mean to her except one, and so she starts falling in love with him. And I can't remember if Regency-era societal rules said it was okay to be in love with your cousin or not. I can't remember. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see whether it's a taboo at that time or not. Um, this one is low priority, um, unless I just really decide I'm feeling Jane Austen. Um, the language also makes it take a little bit longer to read, so probably not. Next up is the pictorial badge, which is where you read a book that is a comic or a manga or a graphic novel or something of that 
Ilk, and for this, I am reading uh, New America by Ronald Cromarty and D. Amorim. This is a indie book, uh, which is part of the reason that I love it, uh, that is focusing on an ex Mossad agent and her struggle to start a new life when she's still being hounded by uh, the enemies of her past. I love. I loved Burn Notice and all this kind of stuff, so I feel like I'll love this. And I do love the Muslim rep. So I will probably get to this purely because that kind of book reads more quickly. And I could probably read this in a day or two. And so it's an easy batch to get. Next up is the Amour badge. And this is to read a book that is either a romance or contemporary. And I went contemporary. I did In the Night of Memory by Linda Lagarde Grover. And this is a uh, contemporary about two young Native American girls that are separated from their tribe when they're put in the foster care system. And the Night of Memory is them coming back and reconnecting. Um, I believe the um, author is own voices. I believe she is at least some part connected with the Ojibwa tribe and she has a degree in uh, American Indian studies. So I'm hopeful, I'm very hopeful that this is going to be a very honest take, a very truthful take. Um, I also need to review this because this is one of the ones I got from Bookish first. So this is a high priority and I'm also just interested in the concept. Up next is the Chiller Badge and this is to read a book that is crime, suspense, thriller, anything of that ilk. And for this one I am reading... Ta-da! Crimson Lake by Candace Fox, and it's shiny cover. Uh, this is the first for a, a book that I need to review, so this is the first. I need to review the sequel, but I gotta take care of this one. Uh, about a young man named Ted, who was the last person to see this abducted girl alive, and so everyone assumes he did it, or he had something to do with it. He didn't, but the stigma still sticks, and he runs to Crimson Lake to try and outrun that past, uh, but it follows him. So I love redemption stories. I love that kind of thing. And like I said, I got to review the next book after this for Bookish First. So this is going to be a high priority. Up next is a book that's high priority purely because I just really want to read it. And that is for the fantastical badge is to read a fantasy. And I am reading... The Guns of Empire by Django Wexler. I read the third one for the sequel -a, a while back and I adored it. The ending was... Uh, I actually tweeted at the author to tell him that uh, I hated him for the one particular scene and he goes well I'd say my work is done but there's still one other book so I'm going to read that one other book this is flintlock fantasy so fantasy with an emphasis on flintlock military think civil war if you're in America or Napoleonic war if you're in Europe or other places um and this I don't even know how to explain this it's the fourth of a series a lot happens in this book but the one of the main characters, one of the point of view characters, is an uh, a lesbian woman, and I love that. She's oh, love winter ear and glass. She's just my favorite. So this is the one where I will definitely be reading it because I just can't wait <laughs> to read it anymore. The next one is the scientific badge, which is to read a sci-fi. Now. I'm really annoyed with myself that I put down the rule that it has to be a book that I already have because. I would have bought the next in the Fallen Empire series by Lindsay Broker because I love that one. But no, no buying new books. I got to read the ones I have for this. So I am going to read instead Alien Prince Charming by Zara Z Zinnia. This is what it looks like. It's Cinderella in space with all of the trappings therein. Uh, only now there's like, you know, weird alien mating and stuff. Uh, this looks like a pretty quick book. Uh, looks like there's going to be erotica based on the cover. I am for it in so much as it's probably going to be a quick read. And that's probably how I'm going to continue doing these things, to be honest. Up next, the Rainbow Badge. Bet you can't guess what that one's for. It's to read something with LGBTQIA+, or just queer rep. Now, this one I actually borrowed from my husband, but it is one that I really want to read. And that is Accepted by Pat Patterson. It's technically a memoir, but it still counts. Because Pat Patterson was one of the first out gay wrestlers ever. Now, it wasn't known to the public that he was gay at the time of his career. This was back when wrestling was still very much the facade. And most people didn't know it was scripted. However, others in the industry did. So other promoters and other wrestlers knew he was gay, so he was the first to be out within the community that was very, very macho, and this is his story, and I am really interested in this. Unfortunately, this is low priority by nature of. I have so many other books I need to read, um, but this is definitely on my radar. <clears throat> Just the amount of struggles he must have 
come up against being what he was in the community he was in. Um, so if you, even if you don't like anything about wrestling, I feel like this would be uh, an interesting tale. Up next is the archival badge, which is to read a historical fiction. For this one, I looked through the plethora of ebooks that I have downloaded and forgotten about, and I found Spirit of Lost Angels by Lisa Perrot. This is a French Revolution tale by a young girl who is basically been <clears throat> looked down on by the aristocracy. Her family's fallen apart because of the actions of the aristocracy. She's put in the Bastille for a crime she did not commit, uh, and gets the chance through that to join the revolution. And this seems, like, very, very emotional, and I'm here for it. This is also a time period that I haven't read many historical fiction in. When I was looking through my list, I could find, like, a gajillion World War II historical fictions, and that's great. But there's other periods of time, guys. <laughs> so I was excited for that one. Next up is The Panic Badge, which is to read horror. And for this one, I also went indie, and I did Blood Drops by W.B. Welch. This keeps popping up on my Twitter feed all the time. It is a collection of horror short stories and I have just heard fantastic things and I haven't read horror in a while so I might get bored and try to just read that one. Up next is The Jester Badge which is to read a humor or comedy book and for this one I am reading The Unhappy Medium by T.J. Brown. This is basically a, a grumpy guy gets transported into this magical world and all of the protagonists are kind of helpless without him. And so he kind of has to be the one guiding the way. And he kind of really doesn't want to, but, like, they're not going to achieve the end goal on their own. Um, so it seems very tongue-in-cheek for the fantasy genre, high fantasy. Um, and so that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, again, low priority just by nature of so many other books being high. The 14th badge... Oh, sorry. 13th badge is the Know-It-All badge, which is to read a nonfiction. And for this one, I am reading... Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. I should have already read this long ago. I know this is supposed to be like the catch-all book for any writer ever. It has the magic secrets to all story writing, apparently. It's what it seems like. And so when I found out that my husband owned a copy, I was like, I probably should be reading this. I might be tackling it during this, again, because it's short. And I'm in the uh, process of editing a book, slash free writing a book, slash reformatting a book. Uh, three different books. So maybe it'll give me some tips. Now, the actual 14th book is the Prose Badge, which is to read poetry. Now, this one I actually bought recently uh, because I got a gift card for my birthday from my mother-in-law. And this is Shame is an Ocean I Swim Across by Mary Lambert. This uh, came out to me purely because, A, yeah, the cover's pretty, but also because, this is going to sound so weird, there's not a lot of emphasis on, like, makeup or breakup or love poems. And that sounds weird. I do like that kind of stuff. I've just been reading too much of it in poetry lately, and I wanted something a little bit different. Um, so this seems interesting. I've kind of thumbed through it a little bit, and I do like the writing style. And again, really small, so I'll probably be getting to that one. The last one is also a high priority for me, and that is the Diversity Badge. Read a book where the main character is a person of color or the author is an author of color, and I did both. I'm going to be reading 67 Salamanders by Jeffrey Joseph. Both Jeffrey and the main character are black, and I don't know much more about that than its own voice is black with uh, sci-fi. I believe it's YA, which I don't usually read, but it's an indie book. I really want to start reviewing more indie books, so I've got that on my list, and again, it's high priority. So that is about all I have. That's all 15 books. I will not be reading all of them. I'm probably also going to do uh, a vlogs more similar to Sequelathon than any of the Witchathons. I'm not going to, like, constantly have my phone on me all the time to be like, today... No, it'll, it'll probably just be like a, a nightly update of how many pages I've read, how many pages I'm up to, and that kind of thing. So if you're interested, please subscribe. Uh, tell me what team you're on. If you join a team, and uh, yes, Instinct is the best. Thank you, I know. Uh, but if you're on one of the lesser teams, feel free to tell me that as well. <laughs> With nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.